We're going to continue on with signal processing and talk about Fourier modes going through LTI systems. This is going to be the basic architecture and building blocks of what we want to consider in a lot of the signal processing because these Fourier modes are in fact eigenfunctions to the LTI system. And so from that, we can make really good use of them in terms of modeling the input-output relationships of a, a, of a LTI system. So let's start off with this idea. So Fourier and LTI systems. We've already talked about the fact that exponentials are in fact eigenfunctions for LTI systems. But now we're going to constrain that a little bit and we're going to talk about these exponentials and we're going to make them purely imaginary, which is more in line with what we're thinking when we think about a Fourier decomposition, that they are in fact purely complex uh, uh, exponentials that we want to be working with. Remember that for continuous and discrete systems, we just generically have that any exponential, if you come in with an exponential, what you get back is the exponential times some scaling factor. And this is just some integral that we evaluate that gives you a number. Same thing with the discrete case. Z of n comes in, you get back Z of n with some scaling factor. And one of the things that is nice about this, obviously, is that these are eigenfunctions. That's great, except for the fact that oftentimes if this exponential, this s, has, for instance, a positive real part, then as t goes to infinity, this goes to infinity, right? And so we're typically not going to be thinking about functions that are blowing up and going to infinity. And if this s has a real part that's negative, then this thing actually goes to zero. So in some sense, if it has a real part, both positive or negative, it does things that we don't want the signal to do. It either goes to zero, so it just appears, disappears on us, or goes to infinity. And of course, we think about signals uh, as being finite, uh, finite signals that we want to be able to look at, explore, and analyze. So we're really thinking about this uh, now and being very specific about what we want. And what we want is that we want the exponentials to be eigenfunctions, but now we want this. We want we want to start thinking about just working with imaginary exponentials, okay? So in the continuous case, the imaginary exponential is basically saying that this, uh, the, land, the s of t and the e of s of t is purely imaginary, i omega. So we're going to assume omega is real. So this means that the exponential is e to the i omega t. So I'm just going to cosines and sines. Only oscillations are going to be allowed in this. No exponential growth, no exponential decay. Uh, similarly, uh, so or and this is going to be now your eigenfunction relationship. So you're going to come in with like a cosine and a sine. That's what, what this is. And you're going to get back that cosine and sine with some scaling factor. So this is just exactly what we had before, except for now, all my signals are composed of oscillations. Okay. And this scaling factor is actually given by the following. So h i omega is the integral of e to the minus i omega t uh, integrated against h of t. And h of t is the response, is the fundamental response of the LTI system. So we spent a lot of time when we talked in chapter two about LTI systems. And the most important thing about an LTI system is to understand the signal coming in and the fundamental response. So we spent a lot of time talking about the delta function kicks because once you kick it with a delta function and you look at the response, that response characterizes everything, all the dynamics of the system, and it's sitting right here. Right. So this is where we're going to integrate our Fourier modes again, is against this h of t. Okay. This is the fundamental response of the system. So once you know the fundamental response of the system, you integrate against each Fourier mode, and that's going to tell you the scaling factor of what's going on for each frequency component. Okay, so that's how we think about this. It's going to give you the overall frequency response. Uh, this is going to be really important down the road when we think about filtering operations. This is a lot, one of the big things that we do in signal processing. Is we often do signal processing by filters, uh, and we filter through the frequencies. And so this is going to affect this guy right here. This is really important. H tells us if I come in with a group of frequencies, how they come out is dictated by this H, right? And each frequency could come out looking very differently. And that's going to be uh, an important thing that characterizes the overall uh, processes of that LTI system. 
In the discrete case, uh, we have the same kind of behavior. We're going to take z here and we're going to replace it by e to the i omega. So we're explicitly making it a, a complex exponential. And so we've traded out from z to e to the i omega. So that way we can just look directly at this here uh, and think about that. And so if we go through z to the n, so in other words, we walk through a system of say n times, uh, we actually get this exponential being e to the i n omega. So what's happening here, it's shifting. This is now cosine n omega plus i sine n omega. So it's shifting the frequency. But remember for a discrete signal, once you've gone past the fundamental frequency, uh, fundamental period, you just repeat yourself. There's a finite number of these that matter then. Okay, so in either case, what we've set up now is we've made explicit, we're not just working with exponentials, we're working with uh, exponentials with purely imaginary components. Okay, so let's talk about the frequency response. So here we go, h e to the i omega. This is the frequent response, and this is now in the discrete case, it's the same concept. You're going to say, my frequency response is I look at h of n, which is the response of the system to a, a fundamental kick, a delta function kick, integrated against or summed up against the uh, complex exponential. Okay, this is this is equivalent to when we go to the continu continuous case. This becomes this integral becomes, uh, sorry, the sum becomes an integral, uh, and we but we still are integrating against the fundamental response. So you see, this fundamental response to the system that I give a delta function kick to is going to be a critical component for understanding LTI systems, which we've already made a big point about this throughout, but now it's starting to play this very nice role here in Fourier series. Okay, so let's start talking about the input-output relationships uh, of a signal. And there's going to be two key things we're going to actually look at here. When we come in and we want to look at input-output, what we've already shown is that when you come in with a signal, uh, you're going to get back that same signal, and the AFKs that come in for the signal are now, uh, the coefficients on the output are going to change the coefficient in front of each frequency component. So the way we're going to understand that change is we're going to first have to have a Fourier decomposition of the signal coming in, and we're going to need a Fourier decomposition of the impulse response to the system. Those two pieces of information will allow us to construct the output to the LTI system. So two Fourier transforms are going to be involved here. One of the signal x of t, one of the fundamental response h of t. That's how we're going to construct outputs. So let's start here, x of t. This is a generic representation. I can always write a signal in terms of a Fourier expansion like this. I sum from negative infinity to infinity over the or the, or set of Fourier, co, uh, Fourier modes, a i k omega naught t and I just need to compute the A of K. So you give me a signal X of T, I want to represent it in this Fourier series, and so I just need to compute the A of K. I and mean, you can do that by uh, an integral uh, expression. Now the output of this, so this comes into an LTI system, the output Y of T is going to be this same signal comes out, but now with this scaling factor, which is H I K omega naught. So notice I came in, if I take the Fourier decomposition of my signal, A of K, I have these Fourier modes. The Fourier modes come back out because they are eigenfunctions of the system. The AFK goes through because it's a linear time invariant system. And here's the result of the LTI system. H is the response that comes from uh, this capital H from the fundamental uh, response, little h. Okay, uh, to, to a delta function kick. So what we need to be able to do is compute this, and once we have that computed, we're ready to solve this problem. So to compute this, I have to actually take the Fourier transform of H, the fundamental response. So all that happens in an LTI system is the system itself modifies the Fourier coefficients of a signal. That's it in a nutshell. I come in with this signal, I'm just going to change the weights that come in and here's how I'm going to change them is with this H. That's it. That's the entire game of LTI systems. So let's do an example here and just start playing around with how I might play around with this. So here's a signal that we might work with and we've already done an example like this previously. 
but x of t, so from negative 3 to 3, and here's the Fourier modes, a of k, e to the i, 2 pi k, t. And what I'm going to assume is that the Fourier coefficients are given by the following. There's a dc component, a0 is equal to 1, uh, a plus or minus uh, 1 is, is a fourth, a plus or minus 2 is half, and so forth. So I have these coefficients. They're symmetric, which means my signal is actually going to be real. And so uh, you can always write this expansion out explicitly, and this is what it would look like right here. And notice what I get here. I get terms. This is actually a cosine, right, which is e to the sum number plus e to the minus so e to the i of some number plus e to the minus i of some number, that's a cosine. So if you wrote it out in real terms, here's what this signal would look like. It's composed of four pieces. The one, which is a DC component. Then you have this oscillation at 2 pi t. Then you have this oscillation at 4 pi t. And then you have this oscillation at 6 pi t. So another way to think about it, your first signal is 1. And what I'm going to add to it is a cosine 2 pi t component, which looks like this. So if I combine these two, this is what it looks like. So it's a DC component lifts this cosine off the axis. And now I add this cosine 4 pi t, which is a faster oscillation. I add it to it. This is what it looks like. And then I add the cosine 6 pi t, add it all together, and this is my signal here. So this signal here is the composite that comes, the linear superposition of those four signals, which are given right by here. Okay, so that's how we would do it. And then we can ask the question, suppose that's my input signal. Okay, x of t is my input. Here it is. I have a total, right, of going from k equals negative 3 to 3. There's a total of seven terms here, right? And let's suppose that the response in my system, the h of t, the fundamental response when I give it a delta function kick, is e to the minus t u of t. So it's a causal system because it's zero before I kick it. And as soon as I kick it, it's just e to the minus t. So it exponentially decays. So that's the system. I kick it, it exponentially decays. And then I ask the question, what happens? And I run this signal through the system with this response. So I already know the Fourier representation of the signal. And so for me to be able to compute the output, all I need to know is how does this thing respond and I want to project that into the Fourier space. So here's how you do it. Here's the h i omega. So I'm going to project into that Fourier space by taking my signal response, e to the minus t here. But remember, I'm going to change this to tau in the integral because I'm going to integrate over tau. And by the way, I only go from 0 to infinity because this signal only comes on at time 0, right? So I have this u of t here. So it's 0 everywhere until times zero, it comes on and then decays. So here you go, from zero to infinity, it's causal e to the minus tau times the frequency response e to the minus i omega tau, and then d tau. So this is for any frequency right here, this expression. And you can easily do this integral as just exponentials, right? So you get this here. If you just integrate this, you get a one over one plus i omega that comes out as a constant, and you evaluate it as zero to infinity. Evaluating this infinity, these, actually e to the minus tau to infinity, this is going to go to zero. So it's going to zero everything out. But at zero, it's e to the zero, e to the zero. This is all one. And you just get this very simple response here. So what you're seeing here is for this h of t, this response to the system, this is its impact on the Fourier coefficients, how it modifies each Fourier coefficient. Okay. So remember, here we're coming in with different frequencies. And so I actually have a formula in this next slide, right, that tells me how every single frequency goes through the system. And specifically, it's this. Every frequency produces this output. So when you do that, you can say, well, if my input is this here, sum of frequencies, then my output is just simply A of K the h i k omega naught and the h i k omega naught, you just act, we just actually computed it. So another way to think about this is this is now my new Fourier coefficient for my Fourier modes. So let's call that b of k is a of k h. And by the way, I just show you that this was 1 over 1 plus i omega. And so here are the different coefficients for this example. You can explicitly compute every single one of them uh, with this simple formula. And by the way, 
the nice thing about this calculation is there's a lot of signals that are like this right here. So this is a sort of a canonical signal, just like the, we, you know, in the last lecture we considered what's the impact of a step function that comes on and off, like an on switch. And we were able to derive sort of in some sense the Fourier representation of that signal generically. And here, we, this is a very generic signal, something that comes on and it just decays. And this is its generic response. So once you have this as a building block, you can say, well, now I'm going to construct my output. Here it is. And you can explicitly construct every single Fourier component, what happens to those Fourier components as a function of frequency. Okay. So that's the idea behind this. So just to highlight, if I give you a signal and a response, what you're going to have to do is find how to represent that signal and also that fundamental response in Fourier space. And once you have that, you can basically write down the solution to the LTI system. It completely characterizes all the behavior of the system. And in some sense, what engineering, good engineering does in signal processing is you want to actually engineer the output coefficients of the Fourier modes. That's one simple way of saying what you're going to do as an engineer in signal processing. If you can tailor the output to what is desired, that means you manipulate the Fourier coefficients to get an exactly what you want to, rep to, to do some kind of operation that is of interest to the application you're looking at. So that's it. Two Fourier expansions gives you the output to an input-output relationship for an LTI system. We're going to use that as our basic building block for solving these type of problems. Thank you.